All right, good evening. Kerry, Tasho, ready for Kokudu? Let's do this. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's do this. We're ready. Uh, so we're Long just going to we're gonna wait until everybody uh, slowly gets into the room. We're waiting for some people to log in. Remember, please uh, turn off your video for now. Uh, we will ask you to return it, turn it back on later just so we can focus on our special guests tonight. Mm -hmm. So Fukui, uh, I have yet to visit Fukui. Has anybody of the three of us up here on stage been there? Very sorry. I'm afraid not. Uh, it is a, um, no. <laughs> Tasha-san, and you? Uh, I did. I actually did get a chance. Uh, in 2014, I was working uh, in Ishikawa at Todorigawa, and uh, Yasu and I uh, received an invitation. So we drove maybe three hours, a few hours. Uh, the next prefecture over is Fukui. Um, and we got there, and it's just a really beautiful bu brewery. Um, just from the outside, it's very rustic, traditional looking. And then inside, it was like a laboratory. It reminded me like the bat cave, like old. And then you go inside and it's just like a uh, perfect balance of tradition and modern ingenuity and very uh, mm. zen-like environment, mm. perfectly balanced, amazing. Mm. That's mm. awesome. So we're, uh, we're still waiting for more people to enter. So don't worry, we'll get started in a little while. We're probably going to give everybody about three or four minutes to join us. So we're just going to chit chat as we go. Uh, I am super excited to learn more about uh, Kokoju and the history and, and, and all the things that we got a little sneak peek during our, our practice run, but uh, really excited to share this information with everybody tonight. It's going to be a really good time. Yes. We don't really know a lot about Kokuryu, as popular as they are. There's a great amount of mystique around this brewery. So really excited to learn more about them. So exactly. mysterious. So, so desired, so sought after, and yet the mystery. What's going on here? But tonight, we shall crack that shrouded <laughs> atmosphere. Yeah, of... And I'm going to ask Carrie to just kind of give us a little rundown on what will be happening today. <laughs> right. So we'll have a quick introduction of our guests, followed by an engaging story of Kokuryu. We will taste the sakes together with the brewer. Please feel free to sip during the tour. We certainly don't want to keep our palates dry. And we'll also have a quick introduction of our guests, followed by a conversation with the owner and a short presentation about Fukui, Fukui City and tonight's featured brewery, Kokuryu. Lastly, we'll finish off with a Q&A and the interview, and an interview with the Kuramoto or the, the, the brewery itself. Tasha-san. All right, while we're, uh, while we're getting started, we're gonna launch a, a quick poll. Um, just to occupy us while we're waiting for more people to join in, because I still see people entering the waiting room. So please answer the poll. Go ahead, Tasha. Yes, uh, please uh, let us know if you visited any of these uh, sites in Fukui. Probably the most popular or famous site is the Eiji Temple, home of the Zen Buddhism, the uh, center of Zen Buddhism. Uh, beautiful, beautiful temple there. Uh, Maruoka Castle, one of the 12 original castles of Japan. Uh, Tojimbo, these are like... Um, natural occurring rock formations uh, and cliffs on the Japan Sea side of Fukui Prefecture. Watch your step, uh, named after the Tojimbo, a monk who uh, met his untimely demise uh, falling off of these cliffs. Uh, no word whether the monk was drunk when he sunk, but it's definitely possible with all the good sake around Fukui. There's the biggest dinosaur museum of all time in the world is there in Fukui, a uh, home of the Fukui Soar. That's pretty cool. We don't really have our own dinosaurs in our area. Do you have a New York Soar over there, CJ? No? Not, not that I know of. I do not think we have a New York Soar. Yeah, uh, there's the Echizen Crab, Wakasa, Fugu, or the Lake Kuzuryu Soba, or the big three, as we call them. Uh, literally, no one has ever called that the big three. But those are very popular. Uh, items uh, in Fukui. 
uh, sip kokuryu sake. How many of us have done that? I'm sure a good amount. And last but not least, if you haven't tried any of these things, but you want to do all of them, go ahead and check that last box. All right, we're going to run that poll for a little bit longer. We're at about 62%, so just give everybody a chance to fill that in. And uh, we're getting close, guys. We're getting close to, uh, to having, a, having a pretty full room and getting ready to do the next. So I'm going to say hello for those of you who have not met me before. My name is Chris Johnson. Uh, I am the National Sales Manager for World Sock Imports. I have been a fan of sake for a very long time. I luckily have the title Sake Samurai, but I go by the Sake Ninja. And as often and always, I enjoy sipping this delicious and wonderful killer beverage. And I'm so excited to start sipping uh, this one for real, real, real soon. Kerry, can you introduce yourself? My name is Kerry from LA. Um, was in sake, started off in Chicago, uh, opened a sake lounge there called Murasake, which still exists today, and they are joining us uh, remotely. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then I've been in uh, LA for about 10 years and world sake for about nine, sharing the joy of sake to the people of Southern California. Tasha san, toso. Ohio gozaimasu. Good afternoon and good evening to everyone out there. Uh, my name is Tasha Pierce. Um, uh, with uh, joining you here from lovely Honolulu, Hawaii. Uh, main office of World Sake is located here and we're just uh, really excited to get to see this brewery. Um, and uh, I hope everyone is ready. We're about to go on quite a journey today. So let's get it going. Let's do it, let's do it. All right, uh, we're gonna end the poll and we're gonna share the results. Tasha, what happened? Okay, wow. not. A lot of people have uh, been to Fukui. Only 5% have visited the Eiji Temple. Nobody has gone to the Maruoka Castle, uh, Tojimbo, the cliffs, only 4%. And the dinosaurs, wow, I wish I had gone there too when I was in Fukui. Uh, no one has been there. Uh, the crab, Echizen crab, very few people have tried that delicacy. Luckily, 44% have had the Kokuryu sake and 60% are ready to do it tonight. All right. So, Kerry, we're headed to Fukui. Our friends in Japan have put together a killer presentation for us. I'm going to show us all the beautiful land of dragons. How exciting is this? Would you be so kind to invite the team from Kokuryu to join us? Kokuryu no mina sama, irashai, dozo yokoso. Hello, thank you, Kerry. Thank you, CJ. <laughs> Hello, Deguchi san. Yoroshiku onegaimasu. Yoroshiku onegaimasu. Hello, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Nobuko Deguchi, uh, International Sales Manager of Kokuryu Brewery. Thank you for joining this program today. Before starting the virtual tour, we will have a short talk with Mr. Mizuno, President of Kokuryu Sake Brewing. He's at head office now. Mr. Yabushita, General Sales Manager, is there. Yabushita san! Hi. Hi, Chris. Can you Hello. hear me? Hello. Hello. I can hear you. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Yoshiyuki Yabushita. I'm at Kokuryu Sake Shop Ishidaya. Uh, Mr. Mizuno, president of Kokuryu, is waiting inside. Let's open the door. This is an old knocker. Knocker. This says ta. Japanese kanji. Ta. Which means rice field. And ushi. Ushi. Which means cow. Cow. Cow says moo. So it ta and moo. Ta to moo 
Tano mo. Tano mo is old Japanese words, which means hello. Okay, let's knock it. Tano mo. Tano mo. Tano mo. This is oh, Mr. Mizuno, president of Kofu. よろしくお願いいたします。よろしくお願いします。で、プリスカミン。え、では改めまして、え、ハローエブリワン。え、国立書道の8代目の蔵元をしております、え、水野と申します。え、本日はどうかよろしくお願いします。Hello everyone. My name is Naoto Mizuno. I am the 8th generation uh Kuramoto. And thank you for coming today. Uh, let's enjoy the tour. Mizu-san, yoroshiku onegaishimasu. Arigatou gozaimashita. Yoroshiku onegaishimasu. Ano, Kokuryu no recipe wa kandan ni setsumei shite kudasai. Hai. Eh, Kokuryu shuzo wa desu ne, 1804 nen ni sougyo shite orimasu. Eh, Ishida ya Nizaemon tuyu sougyo sha ga sougyo sase te itadakimashita. 200年以上の歴史を持っておりますけど、元々は石田屋という屋号で酒造りをさせていただいておりました。私が生まれたのが1964年ですが、1963年に国流酒造株式会社という会社になりました。Alright, so I asked him to tell us a little bit, just easily about the history of Kokuryu. Uh, and Kokuryu Brewery was founded by Nizaimon Ishidaya in 1804. It is more than 200 years of, of history. Uh, the original name of the brewery was actually Ishidaya, uh, but it changed to Kokuryu Brewing Company in 1963, just the year before he was born. えっと、くずりゅうはですね、実はあの、60年前からある、え、ま、実はなかなかその当時は、定着ができませんでした。え、2004年が、あの、創業の200周年ということで、え、それを記念しまして、え、日本の伝統的な、あの、缶酒文化
というところでございます。And、uh, if so, tell me a little bit about it.、Um, and he kindly answered that、uh, it was not him, but it was his father who went to Europe in the 1960s. And while he was there, you know, watching wine and learning about wine, he, he realized、uh, the idea to mature sake like the aged wine.、Uh, so he studied it hard to understand the technique and how the maturation of beverages changes.、Uh, so finally, in, in 1975,、uh, they developed and released. Daiginjo Ryu.、Um, it became popular and is still one of their most popular products、uh, that they sell today.、Uh, and it was kind of the first real introduction of this, this new kind of aging style for them at Kokuryu.、Um, they wish to continue to study and learn about the matur- maturation method to continue to make、uh, new sake and make sake that's enjoyable for all of us. And, and they want to share that. New techniques and old techniques together with that aging、uh, for the whole world.、Um, so exciting that they're going to continue to work with the, the aging component and then the beautiful sakes that they, they make there at Kokuryu.、Uh, Mizuno Shacho, I know, is it no de, I know, ma, deru mai ni choto, kampai, uh, it's a little bit of 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 a 今日は楽しんでください。乾杯。乾杯。乾杯。乾杯。乾杯。乾杯。乾杯。本当にありがとうございました。本当に時間いただいて本当にありがとうございました。まあ美味しいですね。うめえよこれ。美味しいです。美味しいですね。Uh, this is really delicious. All right, we're excited to continue the tour again. Mizu Shacho, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Mizuno and Ms. Yabushita. Okay, now I'm going to deliver a virtual tour around Kokuri Brewery in Fukui. I'm so sorry, but the brewery doesn't open to the public. So today, I will show you some pictures and movies inside of the brewery. I hope you enjoy it. Now, let's get this started. Okay, now you've just arrived in Tokyo. There are two legs to Fukui Station. First, one hour ride to Komatsu Airport and then one hour bus ride to Fukui Station. Now, let me talk a bit about the geography of Fukui. Fukui Prefecture faces the Sea of Japan and borders four prefectures Ishikawa, Gifu, and Shiga, and Kyoto. Kyoto was the ancient capital of Japan, so Fukui used to prosper as an international trading port. So, Fukui's cuisine is elegant and sophisticated. Fresh seafood, including echizen crab and soba noodle with spicy daikon radish sauce, are the most delicious in the country. Actually, Kokuryu sake is the best match with them. This blue line is the Kuzuru River, the largest river in Fukui. This river used to be called both the Kuzuru River and the Kokuru River, depending on the area. Later, the name was unified to the Kuzuru River. The brand names of Kokuru and Kuzuru are comes from it. Kokuru literally means black dragon, and Kuzuru means nine headed dragon. It is thought that dragon is a god of water in Japan, so Kokuru and Kuzuru are very lucky names. Okay, let's go deep into the mountains to the source of Kuzuru River. It is called Chono Mizu or butterfly water. 
This pure water is snow melt from the holy Hexham mountain range, and we use the crystal clean underground water filtered by nature from more than 100 years ago. The water is so soft that it characterizes the cockroach's silky taste. The river runs through the mountains and flows into the Ono Valley. Here comes cockroach's test field in Adoso area. You find nothing but putty fields everywhere. We mostly use the rice from this area near our test fields. The varieties are both Gohyaku Mangoku and Sakahomare. Sakahomare is the newest variety of sake rice in Fukui, which is a hybrid of Yamada Nishiki and Koshino Shizuku. Then, why don't you go to the Fukui Prefecture Dinosaur Museum near here? It is one of the top three dinosaur museums of the world. It attracts not only kids, but real paleontologists all over the world. Okay, let's move down along the river. Now you get into Eiheiji town. If you want to relax, how about trying Zen meditation? Eiheiji is the main Soto Zen temples. It is surrounded by forests and fresh air. There is a new hotel near the temple and you can experience a Buddhist monk's life. After refreshing in the wood, the next stop is Matsuoka region. Here is the end of the slopes and the river creates fan-shaped area with soil and rocks. It's called an alluvial fan. The snow melt water from the mountains flows deeply down into the ground and then wells up at the bottom line of the area. So many sake breweries were built along the line. Kokuri Brewery is just here. There used to be 17 breweries more than a century ago, but only two survive now. Finally, we've, we have arrived at Kokuri Brewery. We had the head office, two breweries, and a retail shop. Come on, let's go. Okay, this is the head office and Kokuri's retail shop, Ishidaya. This building is more than 100 years old and is designated as a cultural asset of the country. Okay, Yabushita-san has Kokuryu's company logo. When you rotate counterclockwise, <laughs> counterclockwise, hi, you can see a Japanese kanji, Ishi, for Ishidaya. Can you see it? Ishi. Yes. It's the same character. Ishi literally means stone. Da is paddy field. But Ishida is the name of a village. There is Ishida village 13 miles from here where the founder of Kokuryu came from. And the third character, Ya, Ya, yes. Ya has many meanings, roof, house, building, or shop. It's just like apostrophe S with McDonald's 
So Ishidaya means family owned shop who came from Ishida village. Even if the family name is Mizuno, people call them Ishidaya as a nickname. So Kokuru's top two premium sake brands, Ishidaya and Nizaimon, come from the old name of the shop and the founder's first name. Okay, and look at ball. There are big ball hanging under the eaves. Can you hear that? Okay. Yes. Another motif of the logo is that. <laughs> logo clock. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Maybe you found it hang out in front of liquor shop or izakaya bars. Uh, it's called sakabayashi, which is made of cedar leaves. It is made every November. The color turned from green to brown gradually, so people know that when a fresh green sakabayashi is hang out, the new sake is just pressed. And when it turns brown, it's just brown now, the sake has aged enough and is really re ready to drink. Okay, and there is a rope round the sakabayashi. And it's shimenawa, a sacred rope made of rice straw. It is made by Kokuryu's brewers every year. It is believed that shimenawa separates a holy area from other places and keeps evil spirits or other bad things like viruses out of the area. You might have seen the ropes suspended in front of a shrine. It is also hung above the entrance of the brewery and it was said that women are not allowed to get inside. Nowadays, however, the old tradition is fading and some female brewers work here. Okay, let's go inside of the Ishidaya shop. はい、いただきます。お邪魔します。頼もう。頼もう。おはようございます。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。
pottery. It's Kayoi Tokuri, a rental sake container from Edo period to early Showa period. Uh, around 200 to 100 years ago, sake used to be sold by measure. So sake shops rented it to customers. It says kokuryu in the back word, uh, yes, kokuryu. And back word, uh, mizuno, matsuoka, mizuno. So matsuoka is the address of the shop. It was good advertisement too. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Yabushita. Thank you. Thank you. See you later. See you later. See you later. Thank you. Okay, then I'm going to tell you about the sake brewing. The brewery is just behind the Ishidaya shop. This is Ryushogura, brewery of flying dragon. Firstly, the polished rice is washed gently by the chilled water to prevent the rice from cracking. Then it, so it is soaked for a few minutes. And then it is steamed. The steamed rice is brought to Koji Muro and cooled down. Then it is spread evenly over the table and gently pressed to separate each grain. This is a photo of master brewer Hiroshi Hatayama doing tanekiri. He is spreading koji mold spores onto the grains. The tanekoji, the mold spores, are in the glass cup and the cup is covered with a fine mesh fabric. Then, raising the cup high, he sprinkles the spores evenly over the table, over the rice. When tanekiri is finished, brewers mix up the rice. It takes three days with tender care until the koji rice is made. It smells sweet like chestnuts. Koji mold creates enzymes that convert the rice starches, convert the rice starches into sugars. When the koji has been made, we make the shubo or yeast starter. The written character for shubo literally means mother of sake, which is what shubo really is. This is done by mixing the finished koji with steamed rice, water, and yeast. The yeasts are kokuryu's original. Kokuryu has around 30, 30 different kinds of yeast kept frozen at minus 121 degrees Fahrenheit. Appropriate yeast for kokuryu and kuzuryu sakes are selected from this archive and cultured. As you know, the enzymes from the koji mold convert the rice starch into sugar. And then the yeast changes the sugar into alcohol. This process occurs simultaneously in a small sugar tank. Then the next step is shikomi, making moromi. Steamed rice, koji, and water are added to the shubo in three consecutive steps called soe, naka, and tome to make this mash. Inside the moromi tank, the yeast continues fermenting for around 30 days to create alcohol. The moromi shows many faces according to the fermenting step. Let's see how they change it. Okay, five days after Tomeshikomi, white light bubbles show up and cover the whole surface of the moromi. Then the bubbles grow higher and then they got lower gradually and finally they vanish. Okay, there are some ways 
to press sake, but today I will show you a very traditional way, fukurozuri. Small canvas bags are filled with moromi, then suspended over the tank and letting the sake drip naturally. I'm going to the next step. Okay, all of the pressed sake is stored, bottled, and shipped from Kokuryu Kenjojima Sake Zukuri no Sato, the sake processing facility. We think maturation is one of the most important steps, as Mr. Mizuno said before, for making good sake. We start with creating a sake with a slightly younger, rougher taste. Then we mature it in tanks at a low temperature. The temperatures depend on the character of the sake. For example, a premium sake, Ishidaya, Ishidaya is matured for two years after uh, two, two years at freezing temperatures. The white flavors of the new sake grow rounder, and the, by the time Ishidaya is bottled, it has evolved completely into an elegant sake with a settled bouquet and silky texture. After careful aging, it's pasteurized and bottled. We introduced a clean room equipped with automated bottling lines at our facility. Our goals are to maintain and improve the quality of our sake and to produce it safely and securely. Now, our passion is not only for making sake, but also its labels. Here, I'd like to tell you a bit about our labels. Fukui Prefecture is also known for Echizen Washi or Japanese handmade paper. For example, Jumaidai Ginjo Ishidaya has labels made of Echizen Washi, each one carefully put to the bottles by hand. On the other hand, when Dai Ginjo Ryu was released in 1975, its labels were made from the canvas bags which we used to press the moroni. The cement tannins used for strengthening and antibacterial purposes dyed the bags a dark brown and gave them a charming foxy quality. The bags were cut into label sized pieces. The Japanese kanji for ryu was stamped on in gold foil and the labels were applied to the bottles. But those canvas bags are no longer used in sake making and Echizen Ori woven labels from Fukui have replaced them on bottles of Ryu. Other regular bottles have the labels which uses the motif of traditional fabrics of Fukui. This is fabric. We hope you enjoy the package designs as well as the sake taste. So beautiful. Movie. Yeah, movie. Just, uh, we can see the movie. Imagine everybody at the moment, the flowing river of the Kuzuru. Ah, oh, look, the golden <laughs> sake, it has arrived. Yeah. Okay, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's That's very beautiful. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> hi. Okay. And hi, John. This is the end of the. Okay. The Kuzuru River ends up into the Sea of Japan. Hi. The Kokuru Virtual Tour is over. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much. Seriously, thank you for an absolutely fabulous tour. 
Um, we all look forward to tasting soon. That was really great. And let us a little bit to the inside of the thoughts behind behind Kokoryu and the aging. And obviously speaking with Mizuno-san was totally awesome. Um, while Deguchi-san and Yubusta-san get their sake ready, uh, we want to let you know um, that we're going to do our kampai with everybody. We're going to kampai oh, with, with the, the tokusen or whatever sake you have, but this is the first sake we'll be tasting. Uh, so please uh, turn your camera back on. If you want to join us in the kampai, uh, we will, again, as a remind you, we are recording. So if you don't want to be on video, uh, you don't have to turn on your video, but uh, we are excited to cheers with everybody. Again, the Kokudu Tokusen. I would also take out all your other sakes at this point um, because we will be uh, tasting the Junmai uh, a little bit later and they want that one to be a little bit warmer at temperature. So rather than cold in the refrigerator. So please uh, grab all your sakes, whatever you may have. We're excited if you have one, two, three or whatever number it is. So we're gonna get ready to do our Kampai. If we're gonna, we're, we'll switch your view to gallery uh, and then everybody's there, excited. Deguchi-san, uh, onegaishimasu. Hi, is it okay? Thank you for joining us today. Kanpai! Kanpai! Love it. <laughs> What's up, buddy -san? What's going on, Omi? What's going on? <laughs> oh, Lopsi-san, what's going on? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yes. That's the good. That's the good stuff right there, people. So uh, delish. Yeah. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Damn. All right. Mm. So uh, I hope everyone was uh, reading along with all the fun facts that our buddy Craig was throwing in there. Lots of interesting things in the chat. While we're tasting, you can always run back through there to see some some deeper information about uh, Fukui, Kokuryu, and Sake Brewing. But uh, Carrie, how about uh, we start with the Kokuryu Tokusen to talk a little bit about it, and then we'll let Deguchi san and Yubusta san discuss. My honor, such a pleasure to be introducing this beauty. Uh, this is the Kokuryu Tokusen Ginjo. <laughs> and there is this number 50 right here, if you notice on the bottle, that is an indication of the rice polishing. And even though it's a Ginjo, it is polished to a Dai Ginjo level, very crisp, very clean very very lovely <laughs> yes yes uh, as carrie said uh, we consider toxin as a standard of real estate standard uh, rises uh, as carrie said gohaku mangoku from fukui and policy ratio is 50 percent actually it is daiginjo daiginjo category and the taste is Mm. It's sweet. <laughs> sweet and crisp. And it's like flesh melon, banana, and chewing gum. Mm. The aftertaste is clear and uh, delicate taste. Yes. So it is very good, go well with uh, seafood. Hi. All right, Craig, you're on. Kokuryu, the black dragon, the full bodied Junmai Ginjo. So here we've milled down to 55%, a richer style. The Goyaku Mangoku rice, everything that it stands for, the richness, the aromas, the earthiness, but with some poached fruit. I mean, it just stands out. It's amazing. And the great thing about this bottle is if during the global pandemic, there was only one sake you could get a hold of, it will see you through the six, seven, nine, 10, 12 course meal, or in my household, salad, entree, dessert. Very nice. All right. Uh, Deguchi-san, let us know a little bit about the Kokoryu Junmai Ginjo. Yeah, it is the main product of all Kokuryu. So it's a, what is it? It's the most Kokuryu de it's the most sold sake. Our 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 highest seller of sake is a Kokuryu. Our highest yes. selling sake is Kokuryu. Yes. Hi. Mm. It's dry. Why? Yeah. 
but rich of umami comes along uh, with acidity. It's go well with grilled chicken. Mm. Mm. Yakitori. I mean, Craig, mm, yakitori. Dozo. It's kind of funny because, you know, chicken and yakitori, that's my main staple diet. Always chicken. Mm -hmm. There it is. I this is one of my I don't have that today, but it, it is it is one of my favorite sakes uh, from Kokiryu because of its depth and and that umami and the, the dark fruit kind of plum notes that also show up in this sake that really create a whole nother level of of the ability to pair. Uh, really really fantastic uh, beverage for for sipping on its own as as well as truly enjoyable with food. So really great stuff. Again, remember, if you have any uh, questions, please put them in the chat and then we will have Q&A once we finish the tasting. Uh, so you can uh, raise your hand and, and ask those later. Uh, all right, so we're gonna go to the third sake and you know, you know who's up for that one. That would be me. So uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna go with the Kuzuru Jinmai. Uh, we are going to play with this sake both chilled uh, and then also room temperature. Uh, so if you have the ability to warm it up, I just saw Chizuko join. So she's, I'm sure she's always ready to warm sake up because uh, she is the queen of warm sakes. But again, uh, this is the Jinmai. To me, this is just, a, it's a really fun a new addition to the, the Kokuru family, the Kuzuru sakes. The Jinmai is is just fantastic. Uh, we have the Gohyaku Mankoku, 65% um, polishing rate. But yeah, just just really, really beautiful sake. Just fantastic. And uh, can't wait to try it both ways. Uh, Deguchi-san, Yabushita-san, dozo. Yabushita-san mo dozo to Junmai desu. Junmai. Actually, this is my favorite sake of all copper. Wow, awesome. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> uh, Kuzuru Jumai is uh, chilly is good, of course. It's dry and crisp and has some acidity. Mm. But once it is warmed up, the umami comes up and the whole test becomes rounder, okay? Do you want to try the hot yes. one? Okay. Yeah. I feel the 180 milliliter carafe with sake and with and pour the hot water. Just a quick note. Um, sure. uh, Chris, hot water Chris, Chris Johnson. Johnson. This oh, yes. container, Kantanoshi. Hot water. And then soak it into the hot water. There are many questions that I get asked about how is the best way to warm up sake, and you have just seen it right there. Um, there are those that like to cut corners and do the microwave. Yes, but Chris, uh, Chris Johnson, he has our uh, sake warmer that is available through World Sake. So um, people on the state side, enjoy. <laughs> yes, after three minutes, the warm sake is ready. And the temperature is around one to two Fahrenheit. Yes, hi. Okay. Delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So that's exactly the, reaction I was, exactly the reaction I was hoping for. Um, but again, for the, the warming of sake, there, there are uh, various ways to do it. Uh, one of the best ways is, is you have something ceramic, again, whether it be the, the tools that, that we had, um, whether you have a, a beautiful uh, tokuri or not, uh, it can be a coffee cup, uh, boil some water, uh, 
put your sake in that said coffee cup, take it off the heat, put that coffee cup with the sake into that warm water. And then as it gets past two minutes, you're going to start approaching, uh, you know, uh, slightly warm sake body temperature as you get to three and three and a half minutes is when you'll start getting to the 122 and higher. So if you're looking to, to do that, that's a really good way. When you keep it on the heat, sometimes you can't control how hot it gets. When you take it off, it's only going to get so warm. So it's a good way to do it. But uh, mine's now ready. So I'm going to try a little bit of this bad boy warm. And also, um, I like to um, put a thermometer, uh, just an electric thermometer in the in the sake itself. And uh, yeah, real precise there. How is it, Chris? Yeah, warm. Warm's yeah. a good way to go with this with this Kuzudu stuff. They, uh, I think they know what they're doing over there in Fukui. I think uh, so. Abso absolutely fantastic. Uh, I'm going to be enjoying this in this manner for quite a bit. This is really, really great. I'm, uh, I'm happy that I've learned a new thing and experienced a new thing with this wonderful sake. So mm -hmm. we are going to uh, move to the next one. I think it's, it's, it's Tasho's time, but um, how about we just throw up another Kampai while we're, while you're talking about that. Uh, that yeah, Tasho. Yeah, man. Yes. Let's see everybody. Raise your glasses for a Kampai, everyone. Kampai. 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 We've had the black dragon, we've had the crystal dragon, we've had the nine-headed dragon. Now we'll have the silk dragon. Uh, fun fact, my name, Tasho, actually means laughing dragon. And my dad's second choice was silk dragon. Uh, but we went with laughing dragon. This sake is amazing. Uh, first thing you'll notice, just off the bat, just let's look at the design of the bottle, first of all. Look at that label, just velvety to the touch with the embossed logo on there. Just the attention to detail. Uh, everything is there in the sake. Um, it's a Daiginjo uh, polished uh, to 50% using the locally sourced uh, Gohyaku Mangoku rice, uh, smaller grain than the Yamada Nishiki, but a very, very good uh, sake rice, especially for this style. It's very subtle, soft, uh, well-balanced. Um, and on the nose, you pick up a little bit of banana, maybe some cocoa, and um, very interesting. Uh, something perhaps uh, unique to Kokuryu is they they also do recommend uh, this daiginjo is served uh, warm as well, which is unusual. Usually it's the jumais uh, you hear. Mm -hmm. So, Yuki san, would you please tell us a little bit more about the silk dragon, Kuzuryu daiginjo? She'll say the best, yes, <laughs> perfect. And we said it is low-key daiginjo because the aroma is subtle and settled and it's not so perfumey, but jimi, jimi desu. Low-key daiginjo desu. Low key. Like the brewery, very secret. Secret, subtle. <laughs> はい、それからなにかありますか？ちょっと注いでみますか？I like it go well with oden or shabu shabu hot pot. It's the best match with all warm daiginjo. Yeah, the citrus and the candy. There's like little citrusy and some candy notes when it's cold. I'm warming some up right now to get to that room temperature. So I'm excited to, to see the variation in it, uh, especially in the Daiginjo category. It's, it's really fun to play around with temperature in sake. It's one of the, the greatest kind of skills I believe that sake has is its ability to change and develop at different temperatures. And, and one of the, the rarities that this, this beverage does to complete a meal at, at very, various different temperatures and, and stages to pair with what you're having. So super, super fun that we have that. Uh, I do have a question uh, from the chat was do, uh, does the Toji belong to any particular Toji guild? Teguchi-san. Hi, sumasen. Echizen Toji toka, Ono Toji toka, Nuka Toji toka. 
All right. So uh, the answer to that is that uh, the, the brewer is a part of the Noto Toji. All right. There were some questions about Yamaha. I saw that Craig, you answered those, but we'll throw that by them as well. Uh, Yamaha Kimoto Zukuri Yatte Maska. <laughs> Mr. Yabushita, you'll answer it. Secret. <laughs> yeah, buddy. I figured that was going to be the answer, everybody, but I felt like I'd ask it out loud just to. Surprise, know. surprise, y'all. Surprise, all surprise, okay? A secret. Yeah, now you know what we're dealing with, okay? Okay, it's not it's not us. <laughs> but what I would say on that is if you're drinking it and you think that it could be a Yamaha or Kimoto because you have enough experience with that style of sake, you're like, hey, wait a minute. Maybe, yeah, possibly, it could be. Uh, well thought, well thought out there, Craig. Um, by the way, I just I just poured myself the uh, the warm daiginjo and it is phenomenal. Make this happen in your lives if you uh, if you have it. Uh, please do warm it up again. Not too not not necessarily hot, um, right? But we're talking 65, 70, you know, right around there. Man, it is killer expressive. Totally different than chilled. Uh, opening up to deeper, uh, more well-rounded fruits. Really, really special. CJ, two quick questions. Uh, first one uh, for Kokoryu. Uh, Kokoryu used to have a line of sake called Ich no Rai, but they haven't- Ich no Rai. Ich no Rai. Ich no Rai, yes. We have Ich no Rai. It is uh, released only domestically, only in Japan. Oh, so, um, but it is very popular, popular labels for us. Ichirai means uh, Sunday best. Very good, good. Oh, that's uh, cool. Where? Oh. And so, like, like this. Like no no mi tai na kanji desu. So, uh, yeah, so it's your Sunday best. It's like on a perfectly beautiful day, the kind of sake you would want to drink. Yes. Keep thinking about some questions. Uh, just for a quick thing, I'm gonna uh, ask Dave to put up two pictures. Uh, first, I just wanna uh, say thank you very much to Kokuru Bury and the team at Kokuru for, uh, for letting us spend some time with them today. Uh, these are the people that are behind the beautiful beverages that you enjoyed today. So that was absolutely fantastic. Um, and again, thank you very much. We're not done yet. We still have another compai and a few more questions, but I just wanted to make sure we recognize the people that make the beverage that's in your glasses. And then of course, uh, even more important, I wanna thank the people that brought the sake to us. Um, and in no particular order, uh, that is Bishak Ramen in Carlsbad, Carls Carlsbad and San Diego, Bar Away to Kamu, High Times, Harajuku Tap Room, Izakaya Takase, KNL Wine Merchants, Takasan, True Sake, Sochi Sushi, all in California. DC online sake shop representing the middle of the East Coast. We have Kadota Liquor, Fujioka Wine Times, Marukai, and the sake shop out in Hawaii. Uh, Murasake, Murasaki and Summertime Jazz Lounge helping us out in Illinois. Thank you very much. And then in New York, we've got Ambassador Wines, Hunter's Point, Wine and Spirits, Kuraichi, and Sakaya. And in our great state of Oregon. We have Namazaki Paul uh, and Uwajimaya, Uwajimaya, Oregon. I don't know why I can't say that, but it is there. Then next uh, from Washington, we have Wild Ginger, Matsu, Momoji, Sake Nomi, Shiro Sushi, Tamari Bar, and Uwajimaya, Washington. See, I got it right the second time. I just missed it the first one. All right, everybody, thank you again for uh, getting that sake out there to the people. Uh, and we appreciate you. Let's uh, let's bring everybody back. Mm -hmm. uh, the the <laughs> chat filled up a little bit. Uh, let's do another comp by. Grab whatever glass or, or bottle that you want. We're going to take a photo of this. So grab a, oh, yeah. whatever bottle you have that you want to show in your picture. Raise your glass. Put it up there. And we're going to take a photo of everybody. 
Oh, so we'll... Everybody ready? All yes. right. Kampai, everybody. Thank you very much. Kampai. Kampai. Kampai.